Hello everyone, my name is Floriana Stefan. I am the project manager of Timishara's project implementation team and I am very happy to welcome you today to our final conference. We are sad at the same time that we are unable to see each other in person. Working on this project for the past four years has been a very interesting and enriching experience for all of us. We are looking forward to see what we will be able to do in the future based on the many and interesting things we've learned from each other during these past years. We are looking forward to see what our future partnership will bring us. Thank you. I would like now to introduce the first speaker, Simona Tondelli. Um, the journey was quite long. Four years uh, have passed from the beginning of our uh, project. It was not easy because we also had to face the changes and the challenges given by the pandemic. But I would really like to thank our partners because thanks to the hard work done in the first two years of the project, we were able to face the changes and the difficulties of the last two years. And I think that the results that we have reached together are worth uh, to be mentioned today and to and they will help us in building also future policies and strategies that will help in uh, reaching a, a low carbon mobility. Uh, next please. So the overall objective of our project is to improve uh, multimodality and to do this, uh, we uh, addressed both the policy level and design level and kept them together. Uh, we addressed the multimodality, uh, considering this uh, as a key component uh, of uh, a low carbon mobility. Uh, our project was based on five uh, main transport means, uh, walking, cycling, rail transport, public transport and uh, uh, electric vehicles. And uh, one of the um, specific uh, uh, um, issues that uh, we faced was also the uh, different characteristic at uh, spatial level, at territorial level. For doing this, uh, our territories, our pilot activities were uh, developed in four different territories. In fact, our partners uh, represent two municipalities, one county and one region. And this helped us in considering very different issues, very different solutions also, and to uh, adapt the possible solution to different territorial context. Um, the, um, the project, uh, I, I would like to thank very much also uh, our project and financial officers, Charo and Antoine, that helped us in uh, keeping our, uh, our way uh, straight uh, during uh, the difficult times, uh, suggesting us uh, how to proceed and helping us in adapting to the pandemic. And uh, I would like also to thank very much my colleague Elisa Conticelli, the project manager that uh, coordinated uh, uh, all the activities and that helped us in making this possible. I'm now going to leave uh, the, the floor to a short video to present very briefly what we have done. You will see our activities, our um, main results, and uh, I hope you enjoy the, the video, you enjoy the conference, and uh, uh, really we are open to your questions uh, to help you in understanding better our, better our project. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Simona, for this very interesting presentation about matchup in a nutshell. I will introduce now uh, our next speaker, Rose Bauer. Please, Rose. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Rose Power, and I'm the EU Projects Officer for the Southern Regional Assembly here in Ireland. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you today the amazing opportunities for learning we as partners have had as a result of our participation in the Interreg Europe Macho project, both from sharing our good practices and also from our interaction with the Interreg Europe policy learning platform. Next slide, please. Throughout the implementation of the project, learning has taken place at all levels and of particular benefit is the learning done by all of our stakeholders and our staff. By building our capacity, we can utilize this knowledge to ensure that we direct, improve and deliver policies that can have a real impact and benefit at a local level here in our regions. Learning is a two-way street and the Matcha partners have made a significant contribution to learning through the publication of 15 good practices on the Interreg Europe policy learning platform and through our participation at over 15 policy learning platform events and by disseminating our good practices, our policy improvements and our action plans at over 25 local, regional, European and international events. The Matcha partners have also gained significant knowledge throughout the course of the project, and this has inspired four policy improvements to date. It's increased the capacity of 63 of our stakeholders and staff, and significant knowledge was gained from our participation uh, with the Interreg Europe Policy Learning Platform events, policy briefs, and in-person conferences in Manchester and Brussels. Next slide, please. Ah. I'll now take you through some of our good practices, which we have, which have been improved by Interreg Europe, as examples that other regions in Europe could learn from. The first one is Cork Transport Mobility Forum, which is a good practice here in Ireland, where Cork City Council, along with transport providers, cycle hire companies, cycling associations, large employers, higher education institutions and other interested parties come together and they meet on a monthly basis to discuss sustainable transport issues, planning applications, public consultations and come together to gain a consensus from all interested parties in order to create one voice to create more sustainable transport in Cork City. I'm now going to show you a short video of this good practice. Welcome to Cork and welcome to the Cork Transport and Mobility Forum. My name is Darren McConnell and I'm the chair of the Cork Transport and Mobility Forum. I'd like to tell you the story of the Cork Transport and Mobility Forum. I've long worked in transport and I found that while everybody wants to do their best, make the world a better, healthier, more sustainable place, we all only have a small area of professional influence and professional competence and this is a problem in transport because the factors that affect how you decide or must travel are not just transport related and often are affected by people working in areas not directly related to travel. So who is the TMF? We are a cross-sectoral partnership with members from 23 organizations so and we have transport operators among them we have local authorities there are community groups health groups there is education and there is businesses and large employers in the group many of the of our partners have been with the tmf from the start in 2013 and the number grew significantly over recent years and also since 2017 we have a paid part-time coordinator facilitating our work And what are we doing at the end? So we try to influence public policy and public opinion and feed into infrastructure planning processes. We meet every month as a group and we try and create a climate in the public debate that is favorable to sustainable travel and mobility. We moderate and negotiate between planners and people, bottom up and top down. We try to tackle and overcome the often prevailing silo thinking in public planning processes. We look at all matters arising around the sustainable travel from the most various angles 
and everybody from their own different angle, every one of us pushes in the same direction, making a case for better sustainable travel options. So thank you for listening. If you want to find out more about the TMF, you can check out our website or contact us um, on our, our email. So the next good practice is from Funchal and it's called Smart Crosswalks. Acknowledging the importance of technological innovation, the city of Funchal has become a testbed for implementing state-of-the-art solutions. In order to strengthen road safety and foster multimodality, in particular for pedestrian mobility, the municipality of Funchal has implemented smart crosswalks that bridge road safety with energy efficiency. The system is powered by renewable energies, both wind and solar, and it includes a Wi-Fi system and a CCTV, and the traffic sign includes a motion detector that is triggered whenever a pedestrian reaches the cross crosswalk. And this um, also then powers pavement LEDs that turn red and green at pavement level. The system is managed by a platform that allows data collection and a diagnostic tool and has proved to be very effective contributing to reinforcing road safety um, at high footfall areas and reducing energy dependency and also improving the, uh, the urban attractiveness within the area. Next slide, please. Okay. The next good practice is from the municipality of Timisoara, who introduced a new bike sharing service called Velo TM, highly connected with the existing intermodal mobility system. The purpose was to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and to improve low carbon urban mobility within the region. Their citizens can now avail of 25 self-service bicycle stations around the city, a coherent network of bicycle parks in Timisoara, a fleet of over 300 bicycles for hire, over 23 kilometres of bicycle tracks that have been rehabilitated, free use of these bicycles for one hour, and the integration of bike sharing scheme in the public transport ticketing system. And this good practice has been extremely successful in increasing the amount of people that are traveling by bike around uh, Timiswara. Next slide, please. So the next good practice I'd like to talk to you about is called the Race Against Rob. Uh, the Southern Regional Assembly with the assistant of Cork City Council and Cork Transport Mobility Forum organized the Race Against Rob. And this is a race against Rob Heffernan, the Olympian and world champion walker in Cork City. And members of the public used a minimum of two or more modes of sustainable transport to see if they could beat our world champion walker. So this was a behaviour change initiative to showcase the ease at which you could travel around Cork City using sustainable transport and also to highlight the improvements that Cork City had completed up to that point in time, including new segregated cycle paths, bus lanes and the new Mary Elms pedestrian and cycle bridge, which was part funded by European grants. In fact, this initiative was so successful, we had to limit participation in the event. So I'm going to now show you a short video of this event. As part of European Mobility Week, the Transport Mobility Forum and Matchup have come together where we're having a race against Rob Heffernan from Kent Station promoting uh, low carbon modes of transport, the bus, walking and cycling. Kent Station is the perfect location as it's a major multimodal transport hub where we're connecting rail, bus, cycling and walking um, all around uh, Cork City. The reason you're all here this morning is for the European Mobility Week and Race Against Rob. You're standing here in Kent Train City this is going to be uh, a regional hub for transport in Cork City driving forward. We're a growing city, so by the year 2040, we'll be one of the fastest growing cities in Northern Europe. And one of the key, I suppose, aims of Cork City Council is to increase and enhance the public realm of cycle lanes, bus lanes, and a kind of a greener form of transport for the city. I am delighted to represent the Southern Regional Assembly today at Matchups Race Against Bob during European Mobility Week. 
This is an opportunity for Cork City to raise awareness of the significant improvements we have made in improving low carbon modal interchange. In particular, I am proud that the event is taking the opportunity to travel over the new Mary Elms Bridge. The Southern Regional Assembly has been involved in delivering this new pedestrian and cycle bridge for the people of Cork. The race against Rob this morning was a fantastic opportunity to showcase some of the infrastructure that we have provided in Cork so far for sustainable travel, that is walking and cycling. This was the ideal opportunity to show the interconnectivity between all of these different modes of transport. Good practice is uh, was introduced by the municipality of Funchal called the Kiss and Ride Good Practice, which is aimed to improve mobility conditions outside schools, um, which, as we know, are affected by heavy traffic congestion, especially during peak hours. So, in order to tackle this problem, the municipality created a specific road lane exclusive for parents ne near to the school gate, and drivers can park in this lane for a very brief period of time so that children can enter the school in a safer way. The measurement contributes to the improvement of accessibility for soft modes, pedestrian and public transport to schools, leads to a reduction in, of traffic constraints and increases traffic flow in the surrounding areas. It increases awareness among children and parents and poten potentially a revision of modal split towards public transport. So far, the municipality has implemented this solution in six schools with very good results. And the solution has offered a kind of domino effect in which other schools have been requesting the municipality to implement this measure. Next slide, please. The final good practice I'd like to share with you today is the night bus, Heimbeck Night, night Owl from the County of Nordheim. And this started in 2018 and provides a huge benefit for those residents who want to participate in a weekend nightlife uh, in Göttingen, Nordheim and Einbeck. And the bus not only connects these cities, but also provides a means for leisure and cultural event organisers in Göttingen, Nordheim and Einbeck to assist them in attracting more guests from their cities and from other surrounding cities as the night bus provides a comfortable, sustainable and safe alternative for the way home after evening events without using the private car. Next slide, please. OK, so that's just a whistle top uh, tour of some of our good practices. Uh, I hope you got some insight from us of some of the learning that we achieved through the Matchup project and some of the wonderful good practices that are all available on the Interreg Europe Policy Learning Platform. Thank you, Rose. That has been very helpful. I think I can safely say on behalf of all of us that we definitely plan to use the learning we have, uh, we have gained through this project in the near future. Thank you very if, much. If there are no more questions, we will um, move on to the next point on our agenda which is about the interregional inter learning events and capacity building in our matchup project. I will be presenting this uh, topic on the agenda. And <clears throat> this, is, uh, this, ne this next topic <clears throat> is about the events that we have um, organized and which have offered great opportunities to meet our partners, to learn in depth about the, their project and to exchange experience in the field of urban mobility. All partners presented their most interesting good practices and it was a challenge for us, for the other partners to adapt and transfer these GPs into their own territories. 
It was for us an enriching and thought-provoking experience for all the partners involved because you could see how different countries across Europe encourage and develop innovative actions in the field of green mobility. It's safe to say that we've all had a great, uh, we've all been, uh, we've all benefited greatly for, from all the good practices exchanged and that we plan to use all of them at some point and to adapt them in the future. Next slide, please. Before um, the COVID-19 pandemic, which uh, put us all into the lockdown, we have had the opportunity to organize four site visits and staff exchanges, which took place in Funchal, February 2019, in Timisoara in May 2019, in Northheim in June of the same year. And finally, just before the pandemic, we had the opportunity to visit Dublin, Waterford and Cork in January 2020. These site visits and staff exchanges enriched the ex exchange of experience and allowed the project partners and the invited stakeholders to see on the ground all the good practices identified by the other partners. Thus, the project partners had the opportunity and the possibility to reflect on how better to replicate and adapt these good practices in their own territories. Each pro project partners organized to mobility cafes workshop in order to present the project's objectives and outcomes and to receive feedback from the audiences. Uh, this was a fundamental um, activity for um, fine-tuning the scope and the specific goals of the policy change. The mobility cafes uh, took place in all the, all the uh, partner countries involved. Uh, some of them, as was the case for the second mobility cafe in Timisoara, took place online. Uh, we needed to adapt to the conditions specific for the pandemic period, but uh, this did not preclude um, resounding su uh, success of our mobility cafe in Timisoara. We had over 53 participants and we were able to learn from and uh, from our stakeholders and from our citizens and to exchange ideas and uh, develop plans for the near future. Next slide, please. I would like now to introduce to you a short video of some of the site visit and study visit and mobility cafes which took place and were organized within our project. Hopefully, these short images will highlight for you some of the interregional learning and capacity building opportunities which we achieved as, achieved as a result of participation in this project. So please sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy our video with the highlights of our meetings and interregional learning. The video, please. So MatchUp Mobility Cafe is based on an Interreg Europe project trying to improve the places where low carbon modes of transport link together. And what we're hoping is that we raise awareness to the Cork public about how easy it is to travel around Cork City. My name is Stefan Koch. I'm uh, the chair of the Cork Transport and Mobility Forum. We have a common interest in promoting sustainable travel in and around Cork. Today I will present to you uh, two examples of where the city of Utrecht is improving uh, the integration of uh, low carbon means of transportation. Uh, mobility is our biggest challenge in Meerwede. We have to reduce traffic, car traffic, by 40 to 50 percent. Um, and this, for us, was the reasons, reason to create a very innovative and ambitious mobility strategy. Cars are only allowed at the edges of uh, Meerwede. The public space will be car-free. We've created uh, logistical hubs, and in these logistical hubs, packages are transferred to light electric vehicles or, park or cargo bikes and then moved to, uh, to the houses. No parking spots will be sold with the premises. I'm going to talk about bike sharing. Cork has been by far the most successful one. And the most popular start station, so where people are taking the bikes from, are the UCC area and uh, Kent train station, offering what we could, we could can understand as the last mile and the first mile uh, solution. But I think the transport and mobility forum is, we're very lucky in Cork to have that. It's with the service providers like Irish Rail and Bus Aaron, but also with green schools, with the city and county councils, uh, with a whole range of, of um, different, different members. We need to convince the public about these changes. So we need to be taking the risks now to make the changes that we need to make.
O objetivo da sessão de discussão, Cidades Sustentáveis, a importância da mobilidade na requalificação urbana e coesão territorial é o de aproximar e estreitar ligações entre as cidades que partilham estes mesmos desafios, que são o de reduzir a dependência do transporte individual motorizado e dotar as cidades com melhores condições de mobilidade e acessibilidade para os modos ativos. Cidades como Lisboa e Pontevedra têm apostado em medidas pioneiras com resultados muito auspiciosos. Estes bons exemplos e outros têm-se revelado importantes para a replicabilidade de boas práticas. Em resumo, o Matchup tem sido determinante não apenas em permitir a realização deste tipo de eventos, mas também para uma ainda maior projeção internacional do Funchal. Regional Assembly is delighted to host this event in conjunction with Antashka Green Schools, 
and Waterford Institute of Technology primary schools who want to share with you what they have been doing under the Green Schools Travel Programme. You should walk because um, you get good exercise, it's saving CO2 and when you get to school your brain will be ready for more work. Peer pressure is literally everything. Like, this sounds really stupid, I really do think the helmet is such a big part of it. I feel like you just need one person to do it. Modify the barriers that we face using sustainable travel. We would like to see in the future safer and less congested bargaining and more equitable space for all to work and play. Thank you so much for listening to us. Thank you 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 for listening to us. Thank and um, safe for cycling. It's really safe for cycling for everybody. Obviously, being segregated from traffic is the most important thing. Segregated cycling infrastructure, as Mark and Rachel have already said, is a very important part of the network. So it's going to be a key uh, part of WMATS for sure. Absolutely. These rural bus services. We have just commenced a review of our school transport scheme, of providing a service that is sustainable in terms of reducing car journeys and supporting rural development. We've done a lot of work over the last couple of years in uh, reducing speed limits outside schools. We've put in things, measures like uh, with variable time speed limits, where we reduce the using digital panels, we, we reduce the speed limit outside schools from 50 or 80 or whatever kilometers per hour to 30 kilometers per hour. What you want is independent mobility for kids. You want kids to feel safe and make those journeys on their own. In schools have been working with schools around the country to try and improve infrastructure around schools uh, for over a decade now. The school zones, green schools actually developed the template for the school zones, which are the pencil bollards and the lovely colourful dots in um, partnership with the National Transport Authority. And certainly outside of our schools, we need to be given those visual cues to drivers. This is an area where there are children, slow down. And I suppose that the, the Southern Region Assembly has uh, two main roles that uh, impact transport and transport policy. And one is the, uh, the managing of EU projects to develop models of good practice um, uh, with other EU regions and cities, such as the Matchup project that we're uh, you know, we're featuring today. We really appreciate you joining us today and giving us your perspective on sustainable travel. Mentalități și cetățenilor vine odată cu schimbarea politicilor publice și în funcție de cum dictează administrația, așa ar trebui să, să se convirtă și cetățenii, evident. Și dacă la nivelul politicilor publice mentalitatea va fi schimbată și nu se va mai încuraja traficul la autopersonal, sunt sigură că și cetățenii vor vedea avantaje. Practicile care se pot aplica, așa cum am spus și mai devreme, trebuie implementate și la noi în funcție de situațiile care există prin trei elemente cheie, sau trei cuvinte cheie. 1. Inventarierea problemelor. 2. Prelucrarea acestora. Și 3. Valorificarea rezultatelor dezbaterilor din cartiere. Am apreciat în mod deosebit uh, ideea autobusului de noapte, care rezolva uh, multe probleme legate de deplasarea tinerilor în uh, zona ultracentrală. Exemplele de bune practici prezentate aici au fost deosebite. S-ar putea implementa într-un mod util și la noi, uh, chiar uh, Trecerile acelea de pietoni iluminate, cu benzi luminate, chiar instalarea în multe din cartier a unor rasteluri ca cetățenii să-și poată lăsa bicicletă. Speaker is Stephanie Tomoshait, and please um, let's hear her story again.
Hello everyone, um, my name is Stefanie Tumuscheid and I work for the County of Nordheim in the Department of Economic and Mobility and today I want to tell you um, in the next uh, 20 minutes about the relevance and role of engaging stakeholders and projects like MatchUp. Next slide please. Um, let's take a brief look at the topic of stakeholders in general. Stakeholder engagement has been happening in the business world um, for a long time and they have recognized the added value of stakeholders. Stakeholders are an asset to a project and can be important multipliers. The advantages are as follows. It offers those who will affect or be affected by the outcomes a chance to voice their opinions. It enables an organization to identify who their stakeholders are and understand the relationship they have with the organization. It brings people together to pool knowledge, experience and expertise to co-create solutions. It helps build collaborative partnerships and new relationships that generate value. It can identify strategies to gain competitive advantage. And it helps maybe uh, to reduce the level of risk within an organization and improves governance. Next slide, please. Bringing stakeholders into the project um, can create a positive atmosphere. Um, stakeholders feel involved, are more open-minded and interested in the project. Even stakeholders who are not interested in or critical of the project can be convinced through involvement or maybe their position can be better understood. At the project level, stakeholders have actively participated in stakeholder meetings and mobility cafes on the regional level, providing expert knowledge and contributing to discussions. Some stakeholders were identified as key stakeholders because they were incredibly important for the further course of the process. Some were rather passive and only wanted to, to be informed but did not want to work intensively on the project. The interregional exchange of key stakeholders during the site visits was a second level of involvement. This allowed the stakeholders to discuss their good practices on site directly with their respective colleagues and if necessary, transfer knowledge and experience to other projects. Next slide, please. In preparation for today's event, I ask Markus Menge from our Public Transport Authority organization in German Zweckverband Verkehrsverbund Südniedersachsen, ZWSN, if he was able for an interview or a statement. Um, of course, um, I'm happy he didn't uh, say no. So um, clear the stage for Markus from our ZWSN. We will now play a short video. Wie sind Sie Stakeholder im Projekt Matchup geworden? Wir, der ZVSN, der Zweckverband Verkehrsverbund Südniedersachsen, sind der Aufgabenträger für den ÖPNV, den straßengebundenen ÖPNV in den drei Landkreisen Nordheim, Göttingen und Holzminden. Und als Aufgabenträger sind wir immer daran interessiert, neue Ideen aufzugreifen, die es uns ermöglichen, die Bedürfnisse der Bürger und Bürgerinnen in unserer Region besser befriedigen zu können. Weil mit dem konventionellen Linienverkehr können wir eine gewisse Befriedigung erreichen, aber im ländlichen Raum sind die Bedürfnisse doch sehr heterogen und die sind nicht mit dem konventionellen Verkehr immer abzudecken. Deshalb haben wir auch Feuer und Flamme, als der Nord äh, Landkreis Nordheim uns vorgeschlagen hat, ihn dabei zu unterstützen bei dem Projekt Matchup und einfach mal zu schauen, was gibt es in anderen Regionen innerhalb von Europa und dort mal auf eine Reise zu gehen und einfach mitzubekommen, welche Möglichkeiten gibt es, wie sind die Ansätze ausgestaltet, wie wird es umgesetzt 
Und deshalb haben wir gesagt, wir sind dabei, wir freuen uns und deshalb haben wir das auch gerne unterstützt. Then we will go on. Um, that was a bit of theory and now um, there are some practical experiences. At the very beginning of the project, there was a call for interest to identify the stakeholders. For this purpose, the entire public and other already existing uh, channels were used to invite. This um, so-called uh, kickoff meeting was about uh, presenting the project and um, the first best practices. In order to attract many people to the event, for instance, the county of Nordheim invited Professor Dr. Knie, a well-known traffic expert in professional circles in Germany, who um, provocatively criticized people's use of cars. Um, that got us a lot of press coverage the next day. In addition, there were several subsequent stakeholder meetings where, where the actual uh, work began. From my point of view, the two mobility cafes were good means to further win more stakeholders for the matchup project and the important topic of mobility. These mobility cafes actually were events that raised the awareness of local citizens about the issues related with mobility, presenting the results of the work and progress realized in MatchUp. Next slide, please. Yes, uh, one more time, Markus Menger from SETWSN will shortly brief you about the experiences as a key stakeholder in the matchup process. We will now play the video, please. Was reizt Sie an dem Projekt über Grenzen hinweg? Es reizt uns gerade auch im direkten Austausch, A, die Ideen aufzunehmen, aber dann auch vor Ort sich das einfach mal anschauen zu können, Leute zu treffen, die tagtäglich dort arbeiten, die die Sachen auch umgesetzt haben, weil dann findet ein Austausch statt, wo man auch über die Vorteile, Nachteile, die Hindernisse, die Herausforderungen sprechen kann. Und das bringt einem wesentlich mehr, als wenn man das auf dem Blatt Papier liest, dass man vor Ort ist und wirklich mit den Leuten spricht. Und da haben wir ganz tolle Erfahrungen gemacht, als wir eingeladen wurden, vom Landkreis Nordheim mit nach Irland zu kommen. Ein Beispiel ist ein Projekt, was uns sehr beeindruckt hat, die Green Schools. Da geht es um die Nachhaltigkeit, das schon Kindern beizubringen. Ein Modul davon ist auch Mobilität. Und da haben wir gesehen, dass auch Kinder schon sehr gut mit solchen Projekten, mit solchen Ansprüchen umgehen können. Auch in der Region kann man sich dadurch wieder besser vernetzen. Es finden Veranstaltungen statt, die von dem Landkreis Nordheim initiiert wurden im Rahmen von MatchUp. Zum Beispiel das Mobility Café. Das sind Räume, in denen man sich wieder besser vernetzen kann. Man findet auch vielleicht wieder neue Stakeholder, die durch solche Aufrufe, dass irgendwas passiert im Moment wieder in der Region, dazu kommen. Und das hilft uns auch als ÖPNV-Aufgabenträger, die besser die Leute wieder kennenzulernen, vielleicht nicht für dieses Projekt, aber auch für neue Projekte. Thank you, Markus, for your contribution. Now I'm heading on to the Southern Regional Assembly achievements in engaging stakeholders. From the outset, Ireland built an impressive stakeholder group for the match-up project with members from the Department of Transport, Transport Infrastructure Ireland, the National Transport Authority, on Tashke Green Schools, Cork City Council, Waterford City Council, Limerick Smarter Travel, Waterford Local Link, Cork Chamber of Commerce, Trinity College Dublin, and Cork Transport Mobility Forum. Not only did uh, stakeholders actively engage at regular stakeholder meetings, but they also joined to participate in interregional site and study visits to Funchal in Portugal, Timisoara in Romania, and Nordheim in Germany. It is only with Ireland's stakeholder support, 
could they undertake the many activities and events hosted during the matchup project? But also from the project, uh, but also it is with their support and assistance that they could take the learnings from the project to create a real policy improvements in Southern Ireland for the benefit of all citizens in Southern Ireland. Next slide, please. As a result of Ireland's participation in the MatchUp project and in order to implement one of their policy changes, the 10 minute cities and town framework, they engaged with a number of national stakeholders to create an intergovernmental sustainable transport advisory group. This group consists of the Department of Transport, the National Transport Authority, Transport Infrastructure Ireland, the Office of the Planning Regulator, the Southern Regional Assembly, and the 10 local authorities in the Southern region. This advisory group hosted it, its first regional sustainable transport event in January 2022 to bring to launch a number of national policies for more sustainable and active travel in Ireland, including the 10 minutes cities and towns framework developed as part of the matchup project. Next slide, please. Now we are in Funchal. In Funchal, the engaging of stakeholders was instrumental in achieving success results within MatchUp. The model split according to the 2011 census reveals that the majority of the residents in Funchal are still heavily dependent on individual transport. This, of course, poses a lot of mobili mobility issues that the municipality is trying to overcome. The following needs that match up helped to a certain extent to tackle in Funchal are as the follows. Ensuring high levels of accessibility, safety and reliability. Promoting physical integration, pricing, institutional logic of the different components of the mobility system, integration of mobility within other municipal policies, foreseeing incentives for the use of public transport and restrictions for the use of private cars, promotion of soft modes by creating good conditions and networks, especially for pedestrians. Enable the use of intelligent technology, technological systems to optimize management and monitoring or urban mobility and to inform users. Ensure public participation in decision-making process and assess the transferability of the good practices. The strategy in Funchal aims to foster multi-modality addressing specific needs whilst bridging it with technological innovation and support mobility management. Next slide, please. Of course, achieving this is a major challenge for all cities and it requires an active involvement from several key players. Learning from other cities and the good practices highlighted by matchup partners the municipality of Funchal outlined a, communica a communication strategy to reach out a wider audience in order to achieve better results. In the case of Funchal, a top-down approach was established in order to involve government, authorities, businesses, operators, communities, associations, and other. During match-up lifespan, the municipality of Funchal was able to involve a vast array of players. These players, flagged in green at the screen, supported the development of awareness activities and led to a wider dissemination among different target groups. The engagement from these players has been instrumental and allowed the municipality 
to address several issues within mobility that were disregarded prior to the matchup. Road safety awareness activities with police and local authorities, freight logistics and improvement of load and unload operations focused of small businesses and retailers. Promotion of public transport with operators through the carrying of activities. Awareness activities for sustainable mobility with the support of several associations. Uh, for example, cycle and walking groups, disabled people and other organizations. And last but not least, um, the involvement of schools in order to reach out to youngsters and students. Next slide, please. Depicted here are some examples of what the municipality of Funchal has been doing along with support of their respective stakeholders. The activities encompass awareness and ludic actions as well as planning to achieve more impactful results. Acknowledging the positive impact of networking, the municipality of Funchal incorporated in their policy tool related to mobility planning communica communication strategies that has been leading to more efficient outcomes. These activities are carried out mostly during the uh, European Mobility Week, in which uh, Funchal participates since 2009. Next, please. Last but not least, here are some examples of what the municipality of Timisoara, our host today, has been doing along with the support of its, its respective stakeholders. The activities show the involvement of Timisoara's stakeholders in the development of the action plan, the mobility cafes, the planning games, and other workshops. Next slide, please. Timisoara's stakeholder, stakeholders group included, for instance, um, local and regional public administration authorities, public transport companies like Timisoara Metropolitan Transport Company, Timisoara Public Transport Company, Timisoara Municipal Roads Company, NGOs, um, with the topic of green transport, high school pupils and teachers, and local citizens. Next slide, please. Yes, um, I hope I could give you a uh, little a little insight into the topic um, how to engage uh, stakeholders in project like MatchUp. And as you can see. Um, um, it's important uh, to have them um, because uh, they take um, important and uh, special influence on projects. Thank you very much. Now uh, give the floor to our next speaker, Augusto Vieira from the Municipality of Funchal in Portugal. Please. Oh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Augusto and I work in the Municipality of Funchal the mobility and traffic division. I'm currently the project manager for, for MyChap. So during this presentation, I intend to, to showcase how MyChap was instrumental for partners in improving their policy tools related to multi-modality. I would like to apologize in advance for not sounding the best today, but I've been afflicted with an incredibly nasty uh, flu virus, so I'm still coping with that. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So starting with Funchal, um, following the development of the policy instruments, our sustainable urban mobility plan, and the exchange of experiences among project partners, we clicky understood that there was room for improving our mobility strategy, uh, especially when it comes to cycling. 
some of the weakening factors that we identified in our policy tool were the lack of effectiveness of uh, sought actions since the measures related for cycling within the sub concern the deployment of bike paths that they don't really make a keen difference in boosting this the use for this type of transport so it was we were in need of spiking things up and we were also aware that communication uh, strategy could be empowered you know in order to reach out citizens and stakeholders more efficiently and tailor campaigns to specific target groups also we realized there are some like the smooth integration with other soft modes such as public transport which is a cornerstone for a multi-modality and finally there was a need to outline uh, suitable key indicators to evaluate the actions that were implemented uh, so that we could analyze their impacts and carry out, if necessary, with corrective measures. Next slide, please. Um, although the specific uh, territorial traits that we have in Funchal, namely the Heidnet slopes, they pose a, a, a challenge in terms of urban planning, this project was actually extremely helpful in tackling some of the challenges that we have some of the good practices highlighted by partners were embedded in our SAMP. These good practices laid the foundations that we believe are uh, an added value to achieve effective results and enhance impact when it comes to interventions in the urban realm to improve multimodality. The, the, good, the these six good practices that are highlighted here in this slide they range from communication to urban design and evaluation. They have expired and engaged us in pursuing improvements in our SAMP. Uh, this improvement uh, was comprised of three axes that were underdeveloped, uh, such as the, the incorporation of a specific cycling plan that could set the strategy for cycling in a medium long term vision. <laughs> The urban redesign to accommodate in the urban realm actions to foster multimodality, thus uh, increase attractiveness, energetic efficiency, and, and sustainable. And lastly, the communication strategies uh, were revised in order to reach out to a more efficient way to our uh, stakeholders. So these new guidelines were inscribed in the SAMP and uh, are now the main reference when tackling issues related to mobility management. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so here you can see an evaluation framework that pretty much highlights the impact of matchup in Funchal. Not only did the cycling planning tool outline the strategy to boost cycling, but the, its methodology is also being used in urban planning and mobility management and led the municipality to try out other measures in the city, such as shared spaces. As for urban uh, redesign, the second uh, cornerstone, you can see in the pictures displayed below, the municipality is now handling public space in order to accommodate specific mobility needs from its users and pushing forward the needs from vulnerable users such as disabled people, pedestrians, bike and public transport users. So uh, multimodality and the balanced use of the, of the urban realm has since become one of the main goals of Funchal's mobility strategy. As for citizen and stakeholder engagement, there is now a tighter cooperation among stakeholders and the municipality is now being able to address citizens and these players in a more efficient way than before. So matchup was uh, instrumental in Funchal and we sense that every involved person, ranging from the municipality, the technicians, decision makers, stakeholders and citizens, we think that they have benefited to a certain extent of this project and have learned a valuable lesson. Let's move on to the next slide. Now I'm going to talk a bit about the Southern Region Assembly Policy Tool Improvement. 
the policy instrument chosen for the Southern Regional Assemblies. First uh, policy improvement is the Southern and Eastern Regional Operational Program, and in particular, Priority 56A, as you can see here, that aims to take action to improve the urban environment, to revitalize cities, and gen regenerate and decontaminate brownfield sites, reduce air pollution, and promote noise reduction measures. However, this particular priority did not have any focus on low carbon transport and sustainable multimodal transport measures. So, therefore, it was necessary to create a new evaluation framework to access projects funded under this priority. Next slide, please. So, what is this new framework? Well, actually, it was inspired by the County of Norton, Good Practice Revitalization in Ban, which has a two-stage process to access the viability of each disused rail track. This good practice was introduced at the site visit and staff exchange Norton that took place in June 2019, where the Southern Region Assembly sought further details on this process and a copy of the comparative analysis and viability assessment framework from the good practice owner. The new framework also incorporates good practice intelligent crosswalks, energy efficiency and road safety from, from Franchal at points of high footfall to improve pedestrian and cycle safety and the good practice boosting multimodality, universal and inclusive mobility for pedestrians from the municipality uh, of Franchal into the framework to include recommendations to the pedestrian network through the enlargement of, of pedestrian areas. Also at the Interreg Europe Policy Learning Platform Conference, Sustainable Mobility in Manchester in November 2018, the Southern Region Assembly got the opportunity to learn from the tram project in particular on bike sharing policy in Pesaro, Italy, which inspired the inclusion of bike sharing into the new framework so at the Interreg Europe Policy Learning Platform Conference, fostering citizen-focused urban mobility in Brussels, that took place in November 2019, the Southern uh, Regional Assembly got the opportunity to learn once again from the tram project on phased pedestrianization for Baia Mare city center, Northern Romania, and phased pedestrianization is now also included in the new framework. Let's move to the next slide, please. Uh, this here is a type two policy change. Uh, deals with the change in the management of the policy instrument uh, that uh, has an improved governance value. They have inserted a new recommendation stage into the implementation process of projects approved, but not yet completed under Southern and Eastern Regional Operational Program 2014-2020, Priority 5, 6E, Sustainable Urban Development Policy Instrument. This new recommendation stage allows them to assess projects approved, but not yet completed using a new sustainable transport framework to facilitate, where possible, the incorporation of recommendations for low carbon mobility and model interchange improvements into these projects. So this new sustainable uh, projects uh, transport framework will facilitate where possible the incorporation of recommendations for low carbon mobility and model inter interchange improvements into projects approved but not yet commenced under the designated urban centers grants create scheme which improves priority five. 6E, a sustainable integrated urban development of the Southern and Eastern Regional Operational Program 2014-2020. Uh, so this new uh, sustainable transport framework to date has been used to review the infrastructure project to improve Wolf Town Square, the Temple Bar Square and Lifey Street in Dublin City. And as a result, the Dublin City Council have included the recommendations for 
low carbon mobility and model interchange improvements into this project, including new bike parking, pedestrian and cycleways and smart crossings. Next slide, please. Well, the policy instrument chosen for the Southern Region Assembly's second policy improvement is the Regional Spatial and Economic Strategy for Southern Ireland, and in particular, Regional Policy Objective 176, the 10 minutes city and town concept. However, while this policy objective encouraged local authorities to incorporate the 10 minute town concept into their local transport plans, it did not provide any implementation support or framework for local authorities to undertake an assessment of each of their town keys and cities to achieve the 10 minutes the city or towns. So the, the Southern Regional Assembly developed a new implementation tool to assist local authorities to undertake a 10 minute town assessment for their key towns and cities. The implementation tool consists of a uh, framework and methodology for the implementation of the 10 minute town concept, developing this implementation tool and, and creating a state of the art framework and methodology ensures consistency and that all local transport plans will include priorities for each settlement in terms of improvements to the pedestrian environment, cycle investment, public transport infrastructure and services, and roads enhancements. So this will assist the region in improvement, low carbon urban mobility and encourage models shift. Local authorities will use a 10 minute town framework to map their, their key towns, identify structure uh, improvements and this provide uh, the evidence required to, to support their application for national funding for sustainable multi, multimodal and active travel initiatives. Next slide, please. The new framework uh, was inspired by the County of Northam, Good Practice Revitalization, Ilmban, which has a two-stage process to access the viability of each diseased uh, rail track. This good, this good practice was introduced at the site visit and a staff exchange in Northam. Uh, in June 2019, where the Southern Region Assembly sought further details on this process and a copy of the comparative analysis and viability assessment framework from the good practice owner. So their analysis weightings put an emphasis on special planning, 20% weighting allocated to special planning, including transport connectivity and 20% weighting allocated to sustainable mobility with a high emphasis on accessibility. This inspired uh, this partner to improve the region's special policy instrument, the regional spatial and economic strategy. In addition, the County of Northern Good Practice Citizen Bus Bodenfeld is a community bus service for uh, citizens with mobility difficulties to ensure they can reach local services from their homes, supermarket, doctors, town hall, other transport connections, and these partners have used these essential services as the basis of their new implementation tool. Next slide, please. This is a type two policy change, changing the management of the policy instrument. This policy change is to assist local authorities to map their key cities and towns and identify infrastructure improvements required in order to ensure their cities and towns adhere to the 10 minute city and town concept. A 10 minute city or town ensures access for all citizens to essential services within a 10 minute walk, cycle or public transport connection from their homes. These essential services include healthcare, education, employment, recre recreational, green spaces and retail. It promotes an ecosystem of accessible, active and sustainable travel and public transport networks to enable journeys for key services using sustainable transport. The 10 minute cities and towns framework and methodology is a resource toolkit to support all local authorities to map their towns and cities and identify infrastructure improvements required to create 10 minute cities or towns 
which is then incorporated into each local authority development plans and local transport plans and provides an evidence based on secure funding to active and sustainable travel initiatives. So this uh, concept will exist uh, compact growth and will reduce air pollution, emissions and traffic congestion. It embeds uh, sustainable mobility strategies into our policy instruments while encouraging a more active lifestyle, improving place making and quality of life for all citizens. To date, four key towns have been mapped using this new tool, and this has provided the evidence to secure funding of 2.9 million to date for infrastructures improvement to implement a 10-minute city of our town. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about North Times policy tool improvements. So we can move to the next slide. Thank you. The county of North Time had the following starting position. The first challenge for the county of North Time is an is efficient connection of county districts to public transport. Affected groups of people are, first of all, old people, people without driving licenses, people with disabilities, and furthermore, people with low incomes. The second challenge is the mega trend of demographic change, especially since the year 2000. Approximately minus 8.4 or 42,000 people have left the country. So a shift in user groups can also be mentioned, specifically younger groups of people leave the county and the decline up to the age of 20 can be seen. On the other side, the amount of uh, elderly people will an age of 60 years and up is increasing continuously. Therefore, the mobility offerings have to target specific groups. A third, third challenge concerns the design of public transport facilities, especially the, def the deficits of bus and train stations as important connection points can be mentioned here. A lack of ticket machines at bus and train stations, not enough lifts, elevators, and also not enough dynamic passenger information can be mentioned here as well. In addition, also a lack of park and ride places as well as bicycle parking systems can be monitored. All in all, mobility offerings lacks accessibility. The fourth challenge is the lack of demand data and support system. Valid and accurate information about the demand of bus lines, stop and usage times uh, are missing. So not enough passenger service in terms of quantity and quality have been done made during the last years. And also data about commuter flows is not available. That leads us to the next slide in which the foundations of the policy improvements uh, can be depicted here. The main policy improvements achieved with territorial impacts are based on adjustment of the new local transport plan 2021. Um, the, the local transport plan was decided in the Association Assembly of the Regional Public Transport Authority on the 1st of July of 2021 by representatives of the county of Northam, Halsminden and Gottingen. The following warning was included in the local transport plan. Improvement of the range of services in the territory of the association based on the implementation of an uniform on-call bus system called collection taxi or on-demand traffic on weekends and holidays in accordance with operating standards. All in all, the improvements in the field of public transport systems and the link of intelligent transportation methods with the regular public transport systems supports a broad and diversified community of inhabitants in the county of Northam. Due to additional implementation aspirations for on-demand systems specifically within the local transport plan, also more in-depth optimizations can be achieved in the future. Next slide, please. This on-demand, next, next slide, please. On-demand transport system in the county of North and helped to improve intermodality and associate different ways and methods of traveling in an efficient and useful way. On-demand services will be a good complement to public transport, 
such as flexible storage would be a real enrichment, especially in towns and, and villages that are not well served by uh, public transport. On demand would cover the first or last mile, so to speak. The implementation of on demand services would bring the county a step closer to multimodality. So that's all for me. Hope you enjoyed the policy tools that was that were improved by by partners. And now uh, our for the end of our uh, conference, I invite Elisa Conticelli from the lead partner to talk to us about the legacy of Matchup. Elisa, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, for uh, this uh, introduction. Uh, I present myself. Uh, I'm Elisa Conticelli, and I'm a researcher at, at the University of Bologna. And I have had the pleasure to follow MatchUp since the beginning in uh, the role of advisory partner, so being a support and facilitator for the knowledge exchange among the other four partners. Indeed, our university does not have any policy instrument to address, uh, so our role was uh, mainly scientific and uh, about coordination. Uh, and now I would like to present uh, the so-called uh, matchup legacy that can be represented by the main outputs of our project, but also by the wider impact that the project has uh, produced in the four uh, territories involved. I hope this introduction can be useful also for people attending this event and prove how matchup has been a leverage for stimulating new policies and initiatives for boosting a sustainable mobility also after the project end. Uh, next uh, slide, please. So one uh, important output of uh, our project is uh, the MatchUp ebook that is available on our website where we analyzed and present the so-called matchup methodology that represent our project, our approach. It is based on a framework rooted on two main pillars that you can see in this uh, picture. So the adoption of a multi-level learning approach uh, involving relevant textures that plays a role in achieving a real policy change more in detail, this, uh, uh, this approach is, ba is based on three levels of interaction. The first level, that is the partners' cooperation involving the staff members working in the project. Uh, this is the more uh, closer uh, group of people uh, and level of interaction. And we have seen uh, uh, site visits, staff exchanges, um, mentioned in the previous pre presentation, and uh, they are the activities that we use for exchanging this experience at, at this uh, uh, level. The second level is the stakeholder mobilization, so involving all the relevant stakeholders that are managing authorities or uh, in people and uh, bodies that have uh, responsibilities in terms of uh, urban mobility. This is a, a level, uh, uh, a, a group that uh, is uh, really important for the uh, success of the project. And we have uh, touched a lot uh, uh, and stressed a lot uh, this uh, uh, role and involvement in our presentation. Uh, the third level is the public consultation. So a wider group of bodies and people and target groups that are interested by the, the policies because they are affected of, or have a role again in the uh, good development of low carbon uh, policies. Uh, and we um, consider specific uh, uh, moments for engaging this kind of target groups, mainly through the mobility cafes that we have presented before. The second uh, pillar is the knowledge transfer and capacity building process 
that uh, has led for territories to, toward the development and, da, and now the implementation of the action plan. Uh, it is uh, based on five main stages that you can see again here in this uh, column uh, in uh, yellow. The first one is the knowledge building dedicated to seeking and collecting good practices. So the, the start, main starting point of our project. The second one is the good practice distillation that aims to extract the most relevant key factors of modal interchange. Uh, these key factors are the elements that really um, can make the difference in achieving an effective uh, uh, modal interchange and uh, a good interconnection among the different means of transport. The third stage is the good practice transfer. So the distillation allows us to uh, transfer the good practice uh, uh, so we uh, draft a specific guidelines for transferring these uh, pieces of good practice that we collected. The fourth uh, stage uh, is the so-called scenario building uh, dedicated to co-design possible uh, and policy and design scenarios with local stakeholders. So it's a, a very important uh, stage to try to open uh, the, the different minds uh, toward new solutions inspired by uh, the, the good practice uh, collected. And the final stage is the action plan finalization. So consisting on the final selection of the most promising planning and design solutions that uh, could become concrete actions. Next uh, slide, please. So by considering uh, this uh, general framework, an important out output that I would uh, mention uh, that has been developed during the good practice transferring phase is the matchup handbook. That is a document, an, an handbook uh, that uh, contains uh, a systematized analysis of the good practice uh, uh, select selected and shared by the project partners during the first phase of the project. So each uh, practice has been analyzed again 25 key factors characterizing a successful model interchange as I said before uh, and uh, uh, this was a sort of distillation of the good practice, no? Uh, to allow to make them more transferable, more, uh, yeah, more easy transferable to other territories. Uh, we um, have select, uh, collected several good practices and among them 15 have been submitted uh, in the policy learning platform so being visible and accessible by uh, the entire Interreg Europe community. This is our uh, 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 an important legacy that comes from our project. And uh, we have to consider that we are a very small consortium. So only four partners that uh, uh, own good practices. Uh, therefore, we think that this is a brilliant result uh, uh, from, yeah, from our point of view. Next uh, slide, please. We have uh, tried to identify, um, okay, we have also, uh, of course, we have uh, important, uh, uh, an important achievement that is a legacy, especially for uh, our um, uh, territories that are the four action plans uh, that uh, we developed and, uh, and now we are going to implement during the, the till the end of the project. Uh, we have already achieved uh, four policy changes. That is a very important result because we have uh, uh, till uh, November to, to achieve this goal. So uh, we, we have already uh, achieved a, a very important result. Sorry if I repeat, but it, it is real <laughs> the case. But uh, we are going to, we are expecting to to achieve more uh, uh, policy change in the next future. 
and we have also um, uh, get, uh, get in touch with the, a good um, group of people that uh, actually increase their professional capacity by being involved in uh, different uh, ways uh, in the in the project so also this part is a very important uh, result that we can uh, uh, show um, next uh, slide please Uh, we have uh, identified uh, pieces of uh, legacy also at the local level. For example, here the, the first case is Funchal, uh, where the, the project uh, was uh, a staggering success, we can say. Uh, Machap has become a source of inspiration and the city is boosting with new exciting ideas. Uh, for example, about communication or replicating new good practices from other European cities or uh, uh, going towards a more uh, innovation, innovative solution through the implementation of parking sensor, for example, or technological action that uh, really go in the same direction of our project. Uh, and uh, the project matchup was also important in showcasing the importance of networking and establishing a close collaboration with stakeholders in applying for funding, for future funding also. So it was a very important element that we want to highlight. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, in Ireland uh, we have uh, uh, another important uh, piece of legacy because on, on the 7th of April 2022, the new national sustainable mobility policy for Ireland was published, setting out the sustainable mobility policy priorities in Ireland up to 2040. But what it is really important is that uh, this policy document has incorporated the matchup policy improvement of the 10 minute city and towns framework and used this as a case study with the number of images from the matchup project to, allow, to outline support for this initiative for regeneration throughout Ireland. And we are all really all delighted to see this long term impact on policy in Ireland as a direct result of the matchup project. Next one, please. Also in Germany, in the county of Northam, we can say that uh, the, the county benefited from uh, the matchup project because the topic of on-demand transport has been included as an important addition to the local transport plan managed by the public transport authority and we have already seen this important result in the session about the policy changes therefore the on-demand transport service is officially an important task of the local transport authority in the entire association area and for the district of Olsminden and Gottingen a new uh, a next uh, practical step uh, for the uh, transport authority will now be a feasibility study on how to permanently ensure such on-demand services by autumn 2022 and at the same time the process of developing the action plan and the discussion with the stakeholder have provided further impetus to, fur to further pursue the topic of on-demand transport for example, the, there is currently an application from a district council group asking the district ad administration to support on-demand offers and bring them into implementation. As a first step, it is planned to introduce an on-demand service for the duration of the regional garden show 2023 in Bad Gandersheim. Sorry for the pronunciation. <laughs> that is a town with Ted 10,000 inhabitants in the district of Northam. Uh, next uh, slide, please. And I would like to close uh, with the um, 
the in insight from Timisoara in Romania, uh, where the, the municipality recognized that matchup as provided constant capacity building opportunities for the local team. This opportunity became from the interaction with the project partners through the activities that I have tried to mention very quickly, um, from the stakeholder and citizen engagement, as well as the participation in the webinars organized by the Interreg Europe policy learning platform that is a very important uh, source of inspiration uh, that uh, remains also the, after the project and so it's uh, really a, a tool that uh, can be useful uh, in a long uh, in a longer period um, so i try to give you a very very short overview of our uh, legacy so what we have uh, produced that could uh, remain after the project end uh, i mentioned some materials that uh, are uh, available on our website and we are really happy all happy to share insight and details uh, um, with, the, with, with people that are interested in uh, understanding better our approach and our uh, outcomes. So we are really available for this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elisa, for your presentation. So I will uh, give them, um, the mic to our next speaker, Charo Camacho, Project Officer. Hi, hello everyone. Thank you very much for having me here. I hope that you can hear me and, and see me. Uh, otherwise, please let me know. Uh, well, for those of you that don't know me, I'm the policy officer that have been following uh, and monitoring this project from the beginning, together with my colleague Antoine that was mentioned before by Simona. And uh, I'm here today to give you an overview of the results and the outputs that the program achieved so far in the previous programming period. But uh, since our projects are still, um, some of them are still alive, we keep collecting these outcomes and results. Then I will zoom in a little bit uh, on the priority axis in which MatchUp is uh, included, low carbon economy. And finally, I will present the main features of the new, that is now the current uh, Interreg Europe program. Next slide, please. Um, well, as uh, I think that you already know, throughout the, the, the previous programming period, we launched uh, four goals, plus this, uh, um, let's say, additional goal that we had at the end for projects that uh, had been already financed. And uh, we managed to support 258 projects, uh, of which, of course, much part of it. And almost all the regions in Europe were uh, included in uh, or participated in these four goals. Next slide, please. In terms of outputs achieved, uh, well, um, I won't uh, take much of your time in explaining this because the figures are there and you can see them. For me, the most important here is to uh, draw your attention on the fact that, as you can see here, we managed to exceed by far the um, targets that were uh, um, uh, that were stated in the in the cooperation program from the previous programming period in terms of action plans, uh, good practices uh, published and validated, and staff with increased capacity. And this is, uh, of course, thanks to you guys and the projects and the, the work, the excellent work that you've been doing uh, so far. Next slide, please. And in terms of uh, policies improved. Uh, or results, which, as you know, is at the end of the day, the most important for us. You can see here that uh, uh, out of these 203 projects, which some of them are still uh, running, because uh, as I said, some of uh, um, these projects are still um, up and running and we are still actually working with them. Uh, you manage uh, to influence uh, to 852 policy instruments. And if you, uh, as you can see here, um, for each one of the, uh, for each euro of ERDF that we invested in these projects, we managed to mobilize five more euros. So again, this is thanks uh, to you, 
all. And uh, it's a huge amount, amount of money that uh, was mobilized thanks to this exchange and the things that you learned and the results that you achieve in your regions. And I think, as Elisa was saying before, that it's important to highlight this today, that they have, we have the opportunity during your uh, final conference. Next, next slide, please. And uh, well, as you know, because you've participated in the different events and you've been following some of the thematic uh, webinars and seminars and peer reviews that have been organized by the policy learning platform. Uh, we also have this community for you to capitalize on your knowledge, to help you enrich your exchange of experiences at regional and uh, local level. And we have this huge community of peers that we have our experts available for you if you want to check with them to, uh, uh, to um, uh, go further in your uh, regional analysis, in the identification of good practices. Uh, and of course, we have the good practice database that keeps growing and growing thanks to you. And uh, even if you're not part in one of our interreg Euro projects, if you're a managing authority, if you're a public authority and you have a particular challenge in your region and you want to check with all the peers and to see how all the regions are overcoming these challenges to learn from them, you can uh, get in contact with our experts and apply for a peer review that you can host and exchange with these all the peers uh, about this particular territorial challenge. Next slide, please. And uh, well, even though it seems it's almost over, but we're still uh, dealing with the aftermath of this pandemic. Um, as you know, we put a number of measures in place to help you, uh, let's say, challenge, uh, face the challenges that we all had to to face during the, the, these two years of pandemic. And these, the results and the outputs uh, uh, of these um, efforts are available for you on our website. And actually we are still organizing events where with the policy learning platform, where we uh, tackle some of these uh, challenges. And we invite you to visit our website and see the good practices, the uh, policy briefs, the articles, and the events that we keep organizing to help you overcome uh, these uh, challenges that, that derived from the pandemic. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, like I said, I wanted also to zoom in a little bit more on the uh, priority access uh, in which Match Up uh, is included. Uh, this uh, represents the previous uh, programming period. Now uh, we have more priorities that I will explain uh, a bit later. Uh, as you know, you are uh, included in the low carbon economy axis and under this priority axis, we financed a total of 60 projects. However, as you can see, it was more or less equally distributed in terms of uh, number of initiatives supported by the program uh, throughout the different priority axes in the previous programming period. Next, please. And um, well, uh, like I said, we financed in total 60 projects, but 26 of these projects focus on sustainable transport and only one of them, uh, which is match up, uh, is tackling or, or dealing directly with the uh, issue of intermodality, which makes of you a very unique project. I want, uh, um, I don't want to uh, again uh, talk about the good practices or the results because these uh, were already mentioned before and uh, we're running a little bit late, so I don't want to take much of your time uh, talking about what you already know. Um, however, I would like to say, uh, of course, from the program point of view, but also more at a personal level from my point of view as a policy officer and as Charo, that uh, it has been a pleasure to uh, be the policy officer of Match Up. It is by far one of our best projects 
uh, in the previous programming period for many reasons. Um, and you've done an excellent work, uh, which translates into also uh, excellent results, as we can see here, as, as it was mentioned before, your um, small consortium, let's say only four regions involved, and yet you managed to, uh, at the moment, I don't know, maybe for the last purpose reports, we, we see more, to um, influence four policy instruments, which is incredible in terms of results, but also it's been very nice from a more personal point of view to work with you. Uh, this project was all smooth from the beginning. Uh, the coordination was also excellent. So also big thank you um, on behalf of both of us, Antoine and, and me, uh, to uh, Elisa and Simona and the coordination team because it was excellent. And I think that you, the partners, have been uh, very lucky having uh, this lead partner uh, guiding you through this um, journey that it was also mentioned before that it was uh, long, but for me it passed in the blink of an eye, maybe because it was always smooth and, and perfectly coordinated. Uh, so just thank you and uh, please keep doing it. Uh, okay, and now let's focus on the uh, project features for the next uh, program. In general, we have a budget for the, the whole uh, programming period of almost 400 million. And there are 29, of course, uh, 27 uh, member states. Uh, without the United Kingdom for this uh, programming period, plus uh, Norway and Switzerland. Next, please. Um, well, the, the rationale of the program remains the same. So at the end of the day, what we want you to do is to improve your regional policies. And for that, uh, we expect you to learn from each other and to uh, have exchange of experiences. You can, of course, you're free to organize this as you deem more appropriate. Um, you can become creative with the activities that you want to include in these uh, learning processes. But uh, don't forget that uh, for us, the most important is that at the end of the day, you manage to influence, to improve your policy instruments. And uh, the two main pillars of the program remain the same. Of course, the projects that we uh, support, that we finance, and the policy learning platform that will continue doing the, the same work, the capitalization of your uh, results, as you already know. Next, please. And uh, as I mentioned before, um, now we have uh, the, the, the program covers all these priorities, uh, which are the ones uh, in the cohesion, uh, in the regulation for the cohesion policy for the next programming period. For those of you that are familiar to the program in general, um, the two uh, priorities that you can see here, smart and green, uh, well, they are what, what we had in the previous program under uh, research and innovation and the SME competitiveness. This is smart. And then under green, we will have low carbon economy and uh, environment and uh, resource efficiency. So it's the same that you already know. However, we have these other uh, priorities that are new uh, to you and um, that uh, give you more flexibility and open of course, the gates for you to, to submit uh, applications, which are connected social citizens and governance. Connected uh, is uh, mostly about intelligent, uh, climate resilient, uh, smart uh, systems uh, of transport and sustainable mobility. Social is uh, mostly dedicated to uh, make uh, the labor market more inclusive and effective and to facilitate the access of uh, vulnerable groups to this labor market and training as well. Then we have citizens uh, promoting the involvement of citizens in the development of uh, integrated uh, strategies at regional level, mostly related to the sex sectors of uh, cultural heritage, natural heritage, and the tourism sector. And finally, governance, which is a non thematical priority uh, that it aims at improving the way in which the regional policies are being managed. And something new in this uh, new programming period is that you can request and you can apply for pilot actions 
from the beginning, from the application stage. Next, please. Um, there are also new requirements when it comes to the partnership. Uh, the most important one is that for half of the policy instruments, minimum for half of the policy instruments that you are addressing in your projects, uh, the policy owner must be involved as a partner. Um, ideally, they should always be there, but uh, this is an eligibility requirement. So at least for half of the policy instruments, the policy owner must be a partner in the project. And for, for those uh, policy instruments, the, the rest uh, of them, uh, or for those that you cannot involve the managing authority or the policy owner, they should come as an associated policy authority. And they are considered, well, actually they are included in the application form. They need to uh, sign a declaration and they will have to report on their activity as uh, any other partner does. And finally, uh, there is another eligibility requirement, which is about the, the geographical coverage of your project. And is that uh, you should have at least one partner where one uh, partner region involved uh, from each one of the four uh, geographical areas covered uh, by the program, which is Northern, Southern, Eastern and Western Europe. Next, please. And um, well, um, I think that you know already that uh, we launch our call in uh, April and will close end of this month of May. Um, however, what I'm telling you, it's uh, anyway uh, useful because we will launch all the calls and most likely second call will be launched uh, first semester of 2023, so next year. But uh, in case that you are preparing your applications for this call, keep in mind that uh, we will have, well, as you know, it closes at 31st of May at uh, noon uh, Paris time. Um, and that we, we are organizing Q&A sessions every two weeks and next week uh, on Fridays. Uh, and next week on the 20th, we will have our last Q&A session. So, if you're organizing, if you're planning on, on, on uh, applying to this call, if you're uh, preparing your applications and you have questions, uh, next Friday will be the last chance for you to uh, ask them live and get them also answered live. Uh, you can check the recordings of these sessions uh, on our website and also we invite you to check the recordings of our lead applicant webinar uh, that you can find on our website. Uh, next please. And uh, like I said, mm, maybe not for this one because uh, uh, I suppose that if you're preparing your applications you already know this, but for the next one we have a number of tools uh, available also on our website to help you prepare your applications. Um, first, uh, if you want to know if Interreg Europe is for you, you can uh, and you you want to check the relevance of your project idea, you can do so. Uh, it's like a test, and you just have to answer a few questions, and you will get a quick assessment of your of, of the relevance of your project idea. You can also get inspired by others or by the things that were already the initiatives that were already supported by the program. Uh, you can, if you have an idea, look for partners. You just need to publish uh, your idea and uh, the main requirements or, or the type of partners that you are looking for on our website and they can contact you. Uh, and of course, if you or when you have a more developed idea, you can also ask for our feedback uh, in written or uh, via video conference or phone call. And uh, we can give you our uh, uh, feedback on your idea and tips and uh, um, suggestions to improve your application. And uh, uh, next, please, I think that's it from my side. I think, yes, this was my last slide. Uh, like I said, thank you very much um, for the excellent work that you've done so far. And I'm looking forward to see what you have still uh, to offer in that the last progress report in case you have more results. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Charo. Now I will give the floor to Elisa to conclude this event. Yeah, thank you, Floriana. And I have uh, to thank also Charo for uh, her really nice word for, uh, for our project, uh, also for me. And I think that the uh, project that I have uh, her as a, a project officer are very lucky. <laughs> because it was a very nice cooperation. Uh, I think that this program uh, really support the, the, the project in this uh, quite long process, quite long path uh, towards uh, these uh, policy changes that we are aiming to, to achieve. I really want to thank also all the participants that uh, have the, the dedicate their time to us and all the project partners, uh, Rose, Florian, Augusto, uh, Stephanie, but many other people that uh, worked at this project, uh, probably they not, not, none of, of, of them are still uh, with us because they moved in, an, uh, in other places, but uh, it was really nice to, to work with them, to work with you, and uh, everyone was very engaged to, to, to achieve the, the, the result that we have tried to, to show today. We are, uh, again, we are uh, available if uh, someone wants to understand better some uh, elements of our project. And yeah, that, that's all from my side also because I, I think we are uh, quite in late. Uh, I really want to say you, to all of you goodbye and see you in somewhere in the future, <laughs> I hope. Thank you very much to everyone.